Hi everyone, my name is Deepti. Welcome back to my channel, a place where you can learn at your own pace. So in today's video, we are going to discuss the different types of sentences that you can use in your writing and speaking section. You need to understand that using only basic or simple sentences will not give you seven plus bands. And so it is important to use variety of sentences so that you can score more than seven bands in your IELTS exam. So let's start. The first type of sentences that you can construct are known as compound sentences. In these sentences, you will use words like for, and, but, so, yet, to join two main ideas that are presented in two independent sentences. So when we have two ideas coming together, we need to build a connection between the two to enhance the complexity of our sentence. So let's understand this with the help of an example. We have two ideas in the first sentence. The first is smoking causes lung cancer. And the second is many people smoke cigarettes. Now we are joining these two sentences using yet. Now, why do we use yet here? The reason is that these two ideas are opposite to each other. People know that smoking causes lung cancer and even then people smoke cigarettes. So we have used two simple ideas and created a more complicated one. Let's use one more example. The temperatures are rising across the world. Air conditioners are leading to increased electricity bills, increased energy bills. There are these two ideas. And so we are adding them together by using so. Now, so says that as a result of temperatures rising across the world, air conditioners are creating more bills. Look at the last one. Pollution is affecting the ecosystem. Humans don't take serious action about it. Again, these are two ideas which are not in attachment to each other. They are not adding on to each other, but they are contradicting each other. And that is why we have used the term but. Now, in places where you want to add on to ideas, you can use and. Let us move to the next sentence type. Here we will understand how do we use the relative clause. Now, relative pronouns are pronouns such as who, where, when, which, and that. Now we need to understand a little thing here. Where do we use each one of these? So when we say who, we use who when we are talking about people. We use where for places and we use when for time. Which and that are used to generally state ideas or concepts that go hand in hand. Now let's go back to examples and see how we can use them. Here, pollution is a global issue. And we need to say that it should be resolved or dealt with on priority. Now, looking at the statement, pollution is a global issue that should be dealt with priority. We have used the word that here to attach the two ideas together. Let us look at the second sentence. It says air pollution is a huge global problem. We also want to say that air pollution leads to lung cancer. Now we have joined these two statements that we want to make using which. So air pollution leads to lung cancer, which leads to lung cancer. Now which would refer to the term that is coming exactly before comma in the sentence. So air pollution, which leads to lung cancer is a huge global problem. Let's go to the third one. People who read regularly have richer vocabulary. So people have richer vocabulary, but which people have richer vocabulary? People who read regularly. Now, if you look here, we have used who for people. Let's move to the next type of sentences, which are also known as subordinate sentences. We use subordinate conjunctions such as because, while, when, as, until, Although, even though, if, unless, and whereas. These are all subordinate conjunctions. Here, we describe some additional facts about the main sentence. The subordinate is dependent on the main sentence. Let us understand this with the help of an example. So here we will have two sentences. One is subordinate and 
it is dependent on the main sentence. So two sentences, one is subordinate, the other is main. Look at this one. It is difficult to control the COVID pandemic. This is what? This is the main sentence. Why is it difficult? The virus keeps mutating. So we are using the term because to associate the main idea to the subordinate idea. Let us look at the second sentence. Some countries have relaxed COVID restrictions. Now this is what? This is my main idea. The subordinate idea is few other countries have still imposed lockdown and I'm using whereas in this subordinate idea to connect it to the main idea. The subordinate idea is dependent on the main idea. If I say few other countries have still imposed lockdown, here because of the term other, my subordinate idea will independently not make any sense. And that is why the use of term whereas becomes important here. Let us look at the next one. As I expected from the artist, the portrait was outstanding. Now the portrait was outstanding is the main idea of the sentence. And what did I expect from the artist? That becomes the subordinate or the dependent idea. So these are few tips that you have to keep in mind while you are working around more complex sentences. Let us talk about the last type of sentences in this video, conditional sentences. Conditional sentences use if-then structure and they are very important when we are connecting hypothetical scenarios or connecting scenarios where we have to use if. So if something happens, then this would happen. So here we use sentences to express conditions in which the main clause is true. So let us try to understand the types of conditional sentences. In the first type, we can clearly see that the if clause has simple present construction and then clause has simple future construction. So what we are trying to say here is, if you are hungry, I will make some sandwiches. So in the present, if something happens, this will be the implication in future. If it rains, we will get wet. That is another example. Let us look at the second type. Here we have two possibilities. The first one, if clause has something which is mentioned in the past, simple past tense. And when you look at the then clause, we use the subject, which is I, and we use would and the main form of the verb. So here the construction will be would plus main form of the verb. If I had more time, I would read more. If you read for your exam, you would pass. So both the sentences are constructed in the simple past only. The only difference is here we use the simple past tense and here we use would and main form of the verb. Now let us look at the second type of construction here. These sentences are known as hypothetical sentences. Why are they known as hypothetical? The reason is that they do not stand true in the present scenario. So examples can be if I were rich, if I were taller, if I were the president of the country, if you were my friend. So what we can see here is we are using if and a hypothetical situation which does not stand true in the present scenario. So here, no matter what the subject is, we will always use were. Even if the subject is singular, we will still use were. And then the rest of the statement, we can use models like could or would and also the main form of the verb. If I were the president, I would serve my country. If you were a superhero, you would save the planet. So this is how we can construct sentences hypothetically. The third type is a situation where something has already happened, but we are trying to describe that how could a different scenario be if something in the past could be changed. So again, the sentence starts with if, 
but the first clause or the if clause we will write in the past perfect tense. Now, how do we understand this is the past perfect tense? We are using had and we are using the participle form of the verb or more commonly, it is also known as the third form of the verb. In the then clause, we will use would have and again the participle form of the verb. If you had studied for your exam, you would have passed. If he had taken rest, he would have recovered. If we had left earlier, we would have arrived on time. So here we are assuming a situation wherein we didn't leave early, but if we had, we would arrive on time. So you are going back in the past, thinking about situation where a change could be possible and if the past could be changed, how the outcome could have changed. So I hope you were able to understand different ways in which you can enhance the quality of your sentences in both speaking and writing section. Do let me know in comments if you need any more topics to be covered. I hope you find my content useful. Please hit the like button if you do. Do share it with your friends who are also preparing for IELTS or generally trying to improve their English communication skills. Subscribe to my channel for more informative videos and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Happy learning. Keep evolving.